Elf. E indesirable. Scrape coat. Face. You are always missed as well, of course. Have a bit. Eh. Surviving. As always, surviving. Did my groceries. It's about all I did today is just groceries. And now coming on here. Oh, and I did watch, uh, one of the two new, uh, FF7 Rebirth videos that Welland's posted today. I'll watch the second video once, uh, once I'm done this stream. Sorry, there's a new update on, uh, just got an email with an update on Our Life Now and Forever. The writing seems to be coming along well. Making progress on, uh, some of the DLCs. Some of the DLC moments. Progress continues on the next Hour Life game. Yep. Yep. I mean, basically, yeah, it's just, you know, words continue to be written and programming continues to be done. So things continue to move forward with that one.
so yay I watched the uh, first couple episodes of the Sp Star Trek Deep Space Nine's uh, seventh season last night. The introduction of Ezri Dax. I really do like her. Like, this is probably sort of like a controversial take, but I actually like Ezri way more than I like Jedzia. Because, like, Jedzia, when she was, like, from the time that she was introduced, Jedzia Dax was basically just, like, completely and totally perfect. You know, she was brilliant. She was confident. She was, she always had a funny quip. Or a clever insight. Strong fighter. Good at reading people, made friends super easily. I feel like throughout the six seasons that she appeared in, she, like, she did not particularly change all that much. Because she was basically perfect from go. Then Esri comes in, and it's just an absolute mess, and it's charming, and... and compelling. What character do I identify with most? Ezri. I do really identify with Ezri. Like, that sort of... That sense of... Big Turks! Thank you for 15 months, Big Turks. Damn, 15 months. Hey, Kelly. But yeah, like, that sense of, like, not really knowing who you are. Because, like, she doesn't, like... You know, She's trying to figure out who she is. I like she's not. You know, she has sort of issues with her self-confidence and things like that. Also, in her first episode, she throws up in a shuttle. And, uh... I can relate to 
getting sick from traveling? No, I have not had any veal recently. I've not had any veal since that time over a year ago where I ordered beef and the fucking Uber Eats uh, delivery person grabbed a uh, veal by accident. I wasn't even the one who fucking grabbed the veal by accident. Like, I wasn't even the one who picked the veal up. Like, I don't know why people got like, oh, veal, uh, veal. Like, I didn't even, I didn't even fucking get the... I didn't even ask for veal. I didn't ask for veal. I didn't pick up veal. Is some random person, some random person accidentally picked veal up for me. And yet it's become this thing where I fucking obs I'm fucking obsessed with veal apparently. Hey, Vanna. Yeah, Big Turks, you can be all up in your feels about these nuts. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, that was rude. That was rude of me to say. be up and less. Fair. Shave my I don't. I don't even trim my pubic region. Why would I bother? No one's taking a look at it. It's not like anyone's uh, seeing it. Makes your junk look bigger. Mine already looks a decent size. So you've heard? Give me one second to quickly blow my nose and then we'll get started.
Alright. It's only a bare handful here, but... We are on the Nuit de Pat. Alright, so we spent some time talking, I think last episode, we, uh, went crazy. We went crazy and got killed by being shoved in a barrel. With, uh, with knives in it. Hey, Jordan. And then we talked to, uh... Medea and Nahima about what's been going on. And uh, we don't have a lot of chances left to figure things out, to figure out a solution to our dad wanting to bone us. So, Fairy wants us to take, us, take some time. So, she unceremoniously vanished. Kiana turned to her companion, lost in thought. I wonder if I have offended her. Rather, I believe that your grandmother does not want to show affection. Perhaps is it a fairy custom? You did not seem so positive toward her earlier. She just responded, yes. Well, this is all new to me. I am just learning about your misfortune. Therefore, I cannot help feeling angry and wanting to find a culprit. I immediately thought that Lade Lady Medea had misled you, but she does not seem to be a bad person at heart, and you act like you have accepted her explanation a long time ago. I do not wish to become another burden when you already have to extricate yourself from this abominable situation. Oh, Nahima, do not say such things. I got into trouble all by myself. Even though I know that turning back time is not good for me, I failed to find another way to escape. This cannot continue. In any case, I am growing weary of those time travels. I cannot stand it anymore. I do not want to have to erase everything again. Ooh. New art. Dejected, the princess sat down on the edge of the bed and sighed loudly. Uh, <coughs> uh, Kevin? Uh, she is sent back to her original body. Basically, her future brain takes over her present body. Uh, dejected. Uh, the princess sat down on the edge of the bed and sighed loudly. Hunched, worn out, she seemed to have aged prematurely. The dashing young woman Nahima knew so well had disappeared in a few hours, replaced by a stranger, someone who was sinking into silence, already jaded, already disgusted by life. Yet her face was still the face of a loved one. It was at that very moment that she genuinely realized the seriousness of what was happening. Kiana was not the same anymore. She was going away from her, far away, to a place where she could never follow her. The fairy was right. She had to act quickly save what remained of the former princess before she became someone else for good. What will become of me, Nahima? What will become of us? Powerless, the retainer sat down next to her, a sad smile fixed on her lips. Slowly, gently, she stroked her hair. Perhaps it is a sign of God. Perhaps that my struggle is futile and I should give up. A clumsy silence settled in. Nahima managed to muster all the strength she had to maintain a link, any snippet of conversation. 
Have I already told you the story of my family? No, you have never mentioned this topic. My ancestors came from Africa in the hope of finding fortune in France, as they had heard that wealthy and prosperous kings were living here. They were originally traders and were simply hoping to do business. Oh. Enjoy, Killface. They were originally traders and were simply hoping to do business. They were ruined by a bad deal and eventually reconverted into retainers, settling in Europe permanently. For generations, my family thus lived in a Moorish castle located in the south of France. The local ruler was perfectly integrated, and they happily lived there for a long time. My mother was a chambermaid and my father a hostler. They met in that same citadel. Sadly, war ravaged the entire region and my father was killed by a stray arrow during the siege. Already pregnant, my mother took the decision to leave for the center of the country, in the hope that she would find a quiet land where she could raise me in peace. After days and days of walking, she finally reached your kingdom. She headed for all the little surrounding villages, thinking that someone would point out the nearest lord. However, some of them had been harshly hit by the plague in the past, and inhabitants had become extremely superstitious. Consequently, my mother was driven out on the pretext that foreigners brought misfortune, and she thought her fate was sealed. At least until she met your mother. As the queen was visiting the hamlet in which she had stopped, she came closer and begged her to give her food, as I had just been born and she was losing hope of feeding us both. The sovereign was kind-hearted and, moved by such distress, she accepted to hire my mother in the castle. As time went by, they eventually befriended each other, and the queen appointed her as your wet nurse when you came into being. As such, we are foster sisters. You never spoke to me about it. Oh, it is not worth mentioning. I mean, I am only the daughter of your wet nurse. But it still makes me happy to share something with you, even if it is just the breast of a mother. The fact remains that my mother lost her life a few years later in a cart accident. Do you remember her funeral? Alas, I was much too young. I was not much older, and yet I remember everything with clarity. The news hit me like a ton of bricks. I thought I was left with nothing, that I was abandoned. Yet I had a roof, I was helping a bit at the castle, I was getting along with the other children like Melisande and Adelph. But becoming orphaned overnight left, it, left me a deep wound. I am sorry. Do not be. The queen took good care of me after my mother's death. During the burial, she swore that she would be there when I needed it the most, and she kept her word to the end. She was as a second mother to me. I admired her so much. And then she too left us. Her passing left a new void, but this time I was strong enough to overcome it. On her deathbed, she made me promise that I would look after you in her absence. I swore I would carry out that duty, that I would be worthy of the honor I received when she appointed me as your lady-in-waiting. I swore I would do my utmost to make you happy. I swore I would be there for you in turn. And I am very grateful for that, Nahima. I would not have been the same person without you around. Kiana intended to brush her cheek as a sign of affection when she realized that her skin was damp. Large tears were falling down the companion's face. Nahima? Princess, tell me, have I failed to fulfill my promise? The young Moor stayed speechless, shocked by her friend's grief. What you are going through, what you must endure, your father's madness, and then this vicious circle, is that not the proof of my failure? 
I was supposed to ensure your happiness, and I am powerless before your hardships. You are in pain, and I cannot do anything about it. Unable to blurt out any more, she burst into tears. Kiana was so shaken by her sadness that she temporarily forgot her own. Hey, Habibi. In silence, the princess took her retainer in her arms and hugged her as tightly as she could. Shh, do not cry. I am here. Nahima opened her eyes wide and held back a hiccup. Off work for two weeks. Ooh, nice. Paid time off, Habibi? I could use some more paid time off. I do have some paid days, uh, saved up. Wonder if I should book myself a vacation soon. Holidays? Nice. When do you last book some leave? Uh, I mean, I took a week off in, uh, January. And then I took my birthday off. And I called it, and I took a sick day a couple weeks ago. What's in it? I suppose, I mean, it has only been a couple months since uh, I took that week off in January. You're supposed to be at work right now? Yeah, screw work. I'm more important. I don't know, maybe I should just start booking some random days. Yeah, like, hey, I'll take this day off. And then I'll take that day off. And sure, hey, let's do that day. A couple hours is enough for me to put more in. More important than your whole family? Exactly, scrape good. Uh, anyway, Nahima opened her eyes and held back a hiccup. She realized that her friend was comforting her for the very first time since they had met each other and never before had she displayed so much tenderness. Her body went into a panic as the stupefaction was sinking in. Her face flushed, and soon she became unable to utter a single word. It seemed to her that this moment was lasting forever. Night had given way to the sun, and warmth was now permeating her flesh. She had to say it. She had to reveal what was hidden deep inside her heart. She had been hoping for the right moment for so long now. She finally can confess her love, Timidly, she raised her head without daring to make eye contact. A Friday and a Monday for a long... Um, so, like, Friday is the day that I start my week, and then Monday is, like, my Thursday. I'd be booking a Tuesday and a Friday to get a long weekend. Princess, I... Kiana dried her tears and thoughtfully smiled back at her. It is I who have failed my promise, Nahima. None of this is your fault. But everything will be all right, I promise. From now, I will no longer keep you away. What little courage Nahima had left got immediately swept away, and she simply nodded. The princess did not notice a thing, as she was far too focused on her own issues. In truth, she internally felt guilty about neglecting Nahima all this time. She did comfort her in the previous timelines around the time of her departure, but it had only been be to better bid her good riddance afterward. As soon as the castle was out of sight, she had abandoned her. How could she have lost her way to that degree? 
It was precisely because her confidant mattered so much to her that she had dared to defy the fairy's tribute. Her godmother had been right once again, and she had to make sure that she would never forget this lesson. I finally understand what is important to me, what I need to save at all cost. I must cling on to this glimmer of hope so that darkness can no longer have a hold over me. How beautiful, princess. You sound so mature all of a sudden. Kiana chuckled. It was true that her attitude had become oddly maternal toward her friend, as if their roles had been reversed. Could it have been the impact her numerous time travels had on her personality? She felt surprisingly confident in her presence, as if she had become capable of everything. Hey, color purple. A strange temptation seized her as she was looking at her confidant. She wanted to embarrass her. Should she give in or resist? Yeah, let's tease. Although there were far more urgent matters to attend to, she did not care and gave in to this irrepressible desire. You will always be my model, come what may. You're, oh, princess, I do not know what to say. You leave me an emotional wreck. I do not know if I have become any more reasonable, but I am starting to take perverse pleasure in teasing you. How mischievous, how mischievous of you. You know that I easily get flustered. All the more reason to continue. But you should see your face when you are pouting. You are utterly adorable. Increasingly disconcerted, Nahima attempted to steer away the conversation from the topic by flailing around. But princess, that was not the time to play. We have to resolve a matter of the utmost importance, and time is flying by. You are right. We have little time left, and I still have to make a request to my godmother to get away from my father without incurring fate's wrath. But I swear we will find a solution. Together. Regaining their composure, the two men set to think about a new plan together. Quite evidently, my previous attempts were not entirely silly. I admittedly committed mistakes, but I did have some good ideas. Only I can make a difference by keeping those good ideas and, maybe, combine them. I strongly agree. Concealing yourself in an object in such a way as to be transported over long distances seems like the best way to flee. It would be too limiting to walk, and it would not be wise to embark on a boat or in a cart when your father is looking for you. You would be instantly recognized and apprehended. I am not ordering tonight. The trouble is to be able to choose my destination. Traveling on foot is bound to lead me to Lord Griselda's kingdom, and the Golden Bull only allows me to reach Lord Thais. Considering the outcome of our previous meetings, I would rather never see them again. Quite understandably. Deeply focused, Nahima leaned against the princess's luminous wardrobe in order to better consider their options. We need another object, something big enough so that you could hide inside, yet innocuous at the same time. She grimaced as she was tapping her fingers against the wood of the furniture. All of a sudden, she had an epiphany. Princess, I know! Your wardrobe! Explain your idea. I do not follow. Excited, the, retainers open, the retainer opened the doors and invited her mistress to examine said wardrobe. Your wardrobe happens to possess some sort of false bottom. I noticed it one day when I was hanging, your, hanging dresses. See this partition? It is actually possible to tip it over and slip behind. Well, this is rather astute. But my father is not an idiot. He will surely search the castle from cellar to attic. That is why we need an additional trick. We must script your disappearance in such a way that he will not think about what ins about inspecting what is right under his nose. If my godmother can provide an elixir with a longer effect than in previous times, it seems conceivable. I only hope that he is truly going to rid himself of my belongings, as you suspect. Otherwise, I will be stuck here again. 
Trust me, there is no reason why this plan should fail. Very well, your idea is adopted. I have no alternative anyway. Let us call my godmother without further delay. I am... I am never far away. The two young women flinched upon hearing the fairy's voice, as she had once again appeared without warning. Without meaning any disrespect, godmother, could you show yourself in a slightly less sudden fashion? <laughs> That's kind of funny. I like that. With all due respect, don't do that! <laughs> Bitch! I am not asking you to knock on the door, but I must admit that it is rather tiring to leap this way each time I need to solicit you. I am obligated to deny any responsibility if I have abused my teleportation ability in previous realities, as I have no recollection of it. <laughs> I can troll. Can you not fairy so hard? Exactly. Hey, PK. Medea is a goddamn... Medea is not a fairy, she's a troll. Anyway, gotta blow my nose again, give me a second. What's going on in the game? Uh, so far, not much. Uh, Kiana was feeling really down about all her failures, so Nahima comforted her, and uh, that was uh, that ended up resulting in uh, Nahima feeling really down, so Kiana comforted her, and now they've decided on a plan of action. You could not have forgotten about our first encounters, or your intervention to dissuade me from returning to Claremont. You inexplicably seem to take great delight in startling me. Really? Me? <laughs> this is completely unintentional on my part, and I duly apologize. Kiana frowned. The fairy's behavior was so forced that it could not possibly be anything but deliberate. Come now, is that her way to retaliate for my misdemeanor? No, it's just her way of having fun! Had she not repeatedly saved me from the scaffold, I would have sworn that she was trying to scare me to death. Right, enough chatting. Have you made up your mind? We would like to reproduce the same strategy I previously used, but with my wardrobe instead of the golden bowl. But the magic filter you had concocted for me would need to last much longer. Over a week at least. Well, well, this is within my capabilities for sure. However, something is bothering me. You are aware that you can borrow me any other magical object, are you not? I have not forgotten, Godmother. Feigning death nevertheless remains the best option available to me if I want to deceive my father. Hey, Joel. Very well, very well. Once more, the creature performed a few graceful gestures and a familiar vial appeared in her hand. Here is your potion. As she was holding out the, the vial, Medea started to mumble in a low voice. Uh, 
I suspect that you take as much pleasure in seeing me create these those stupid elixirs as I do appearing in your back. You are saying, Godmother. <laughs> She's like, I can do other things! But they'd be just being like, I can do other things than sleep potions! I have other talents, damn it! Nothing of importance. As soon as you take the beverage, you will fall into a deep sleep that will last exactly ten days. I thus advise her to drink it at the last minute, etc., etc. The fairy was unable to suppress a polite yawn. You know the routine. Call me if there is something new. <laughs> Jeez! It's still life or death shit going on here. Medea, you could at least pretend to be interested. Her silhouette vanished almost instantly. I am beginning to question the benefit of having my godmother remember my time travels. She seems inconvenienced by my requests. I suppose it is her way of making you feel that it is high time for this unfortunate chain of repetitions to end. You must be right. Well, what is your plan? I am counting on you, Nahima. The lady-in-waiting proudly puffed out her chest. Do not worry, I will do my best to get you out of here. As the young Moor was preparing to slip into her wardrobe, she hesitated for a moment. Was she going to make the same mistakes? Was she going to abandon her servant once again? I promise to send you a letter once I am safe and sound. Thus, we will never truly grow apart, and we will meet again in due course. Thank you, Princess. The prospect of hearing more from you soon fills my heart with courage. After one last smile, Kiana took the filter and the plan was put in motion. It was actually quite simple. Once the princess was safe in her hiding place, Nahima worked on making the loudest commotion possible. No, please! Do not hurt her! While screaming, she was blowing out all the candles, vandalizing the room and throwing the sheets through the wide open window. Help! Help! Someone is abducting the princess! Upon listening carefully, she perceived frantic footsteps heading in her direction. With a satisfied smirk, she dipped her fingers in the spilled vase left laying, lying on the bedside table and covered her face with water to simulate tears. She then regained her composure and rushed into the corridor while faking dread. Help! The princess! She immediately came across a handful of retainers. Alerted by the noise, they had been the first to wake up and were coming to inquire about the situation. Oh, it is awful! It is awful! I was bringing a refreshment to the heiress as she'd instruct me to when a gigantic shadow suddenly whipped through the window. It was a monster as one had never seen before. Enormous, hairy, he had claws as sharp as blades, imposing horns and a forked tail. I immediately knew that it was the devil. He rushed toward Lady Kiana and took her away. The devil? Nahima, what are you saying? Why would he kidnap the princess? That's what? She didn't commit any crime? In a husky voice that makes you shiver, he said he was taking the daughter as a way to punish the father that she would be going to hell because she was no longer protected by God and that the whole castle would be cursed. And then he spread out his wings and flew away. I tried to stop him, but he was too strong. Heavens, you mean that the wedding? The king's attempted incest is going to cost him his lineage. I knew it was a bad idea. Until the very last moment, I tried everything to save her. But it is too late now. She has been spirited away. Oh, princess, you did not deserve such a fate. 
What is happening here? Informed about the commotion, the king himself made his way to his daughter's bedroom to examine it and obtain Nahima's testimony. Quite strategically placed in front of the wardrobe, she told her story again and added new details, each one more horrifying than the last. She was crying and cursing so much that she was easily believed, since she was the closest person to the heiress. The sovereign could only assess her disparition. He still sent horse riders roaming the kingdom to search for her, and ordered his subjects to disperse. The deception was working perfectly. As soon as he had turned his back, retainers slipped into the bedroom to confirm the lady-in-waiting's account, and, upon catching sight of the evidence of the fight, they immediately started to spread rumors about the abduction. I love how all the male helps stand like that. Yep. In the following days, the rumor grew and grew. Everyone was talking about the divine punishment and the young woman's misfortune. The kingdom's unrest was such that some affirmed that they had noticed a black angel at the time of the tragedy. Others were fearing the curse that could strike at any moment and were thinking about leaving the country. The king's counselors were among those. They were lamenting and relentlessly begging the Lord to turn to God, to atone for his sins. Alas, once again he turned a deaf ear. Indeed, the king did not believe in this farce uh, in any way. If truth be told, he did not believe in anything, and only had faith in the words of the druid who had served as his trusted confidant. Madness had been away at his heart so much that nothing could convince him to renounce his obsession. Not even the devil. He would therefore regularly visit his daughter's empty bedroom to ponder. What a pack of lies. The retainers are accomplice. There is no doubt about it. I know you have fled, that this is only a ruse meant to deceive me. Traitress, I will eventually lay my hands on you. The, desperate was, the despot was growing so enraged to see his prey slip through his fingers that he sent messengers to all the neighboring kingdoms. Lord Griseld and Lord Thalier both received a letter requesting them to convey any information they could have regarding the missing princess. But nobody had seen her. Every passing day he would come to sit on the empty bed. He would pace up and down the room's few meters, again and again. Every passing day he was instructing an ever-increasing number of new envoys to travel leave ever further. Yet those searches were beginning to cost him a lot, and, without the marvelous donkey, he came to run low on money. Out of vexation, he decided to rid himself of many precious objects, and demanded that Kiana's wardrobe be sold. He did not want to have it in plain view, as it had originally been chosen by his late wife. His servant promptly complied, and carried it on a cart to the nearest marketplace. The piece of furniture was quite magnificently carved. It therefore caught the eye of a wealthy merchant, who hurried to purchase it in exchange for a sizable amount of money. Once in his possession, he transported it on his boat, and sailed away toward a foreign country. Nahima, who had secretly followed the retainers, watched the crew's departure from a distance with a trembling heart. May this ship carry you to a more favorable land. I will remain in post, waiting for a letter every day. You know, it occurs to me that sh rather than a letter, Kiana could probably just be like, hey, godmother, hey, fairy Medea, fairy... Think you could use your fairy powers to just pop on over to Nahima and say, Hey, this is where she is. This is where uh, Kiana is. Cool. 
After a few days traveling, the boat finally stopped in the great seaport of Genoa. The trader, who specialized in rare and precious items, was hoping to make a hefty profit out of his new acquisitions. As it happened, he was also a friend of a king, also the friend of a king, so he wanted to present the best merchandise to him before anyone else. Thus, Genis, as he was called, showed himself the day after his arrival. Hey, Roxanne. I hope I am not coming here for nothing, merchant. I came back from hunting empty-handed this morning, and I am in a very bad mood. I can't do an Italian accent. Genoa, Genoa's Italy, right? Yeah, I don't know how to do a Genoa, uh, an Italian accent. Other than like... It's a me, a Mario! And I don't think that, that, that feels like it'd be a bit much. I hope I'm not coming here for nothing, Merchant. I came back from hunting up the end of this morning, and I am in a very bad mood. Yeah, that's a bit much. I hope for your sake that there are genuine treasures among your trinkets. They're not, Your Majesty. I have traveled extensively in all the kingdoms of France, and I only bring you today what is most beautiful. Hey, Lizette. In particular, a ruined lord sold me a few of his finest jewels. Blah, nothing but worthless stones. It seemed to me that you loved collecting them. The monarch sighed with a vacant look. That is true, but I grew tired at the sight of those gemstones. I have decided to purchase only the most remarkable items I can find. Quality rather than quantity? Well, you are throwing a challenge my way, and I fully intend to rise to it. What do you think of this sublime harp? Towering, classically shaped, all made in mahogany, each plucked string produces an angelic melody. However, a trip to the Luthier will be necessary to restore it to good condition. The previous owner took little care of the instrument. Beautiful object, but I do not practice music there frequently. Very well. I have here a fairy key that is set to open any door. A key? Come now, this is a rather ludicrous item. Why not flower pots made of solid gold and embedded with rubies? Besides, I absolutely do not believe in magic. Are you also going to try to sell me seven league boots? The trader began to sweat profusely. He had completely forgotten the sovereign's aversion for unholy things. His oversight could cost him dearly. He had to tread carefully. I would not dare, my lord. You have known me long enough to be aware that I do not enjoy fairy. You have known me long enough to be aware that I do not enjoy fairy tales, merchant. Show me a relic, then we shall speak. I unfortunately do not have this kind of item in my holds. I have not forgotten about your request to find a fragment of the Turin Shroud. Numerous pieces of fragment have been presented to me, but to this day, I have never been able to prove one of them to be the linen that once wrapped, fi wrapped the face of Jesus. A great pity. However, I cannot help but notice that it has been quite a long time since I have found anything interesting to buy from you. I am a little disappointed. With sweaty hands and a dry throat, the merchant had uh, surreptitiously rummaged through his chests in search for that one piece that could make the Lord forget his blunder. King Janice was a powerful man, and conducting business with him guaranteed a sizable income. But he was also a particularly difficult customer and he had to be regularly pleased in order to maintain such a profitable relationship. After thinking deeply, the trader suddenly had a bright idea. I may still have an ace up my sleeve. What do you say? 
I recently acquired a wardrobe unlike anything you have ever seen before. It is so lavishly adorned, so intricately chiseled, that it could only be owned by a connoisseur such as yourself. Janice's curiosity was piqued. Really? Show me and I will be the judge of that. Without further delay, the merchant showed the king around his hold and presented Kiana's wardrobe to him. He examined it from all sides, to the merchant's great relief. He is coming closer to inspect it. This is a good sign. I can sense that he is interested. What do you say, your majesty? Is this furniture item to your liking? Very much so. These moldings are exquisite. The best part is that there is still dressed inside, all made from the most refined fabric and they are in excellent condition to boot. It would suffice to hire a tailor to adjust their size to fit a new owner. You have in your hands the perfect gift for a great lady. I would not have any use for that. I am still a widowed. The merchant skillfully rectified his mistake. Certainly, but I assume that you intend to remarry soon, do you not? Would a courteous present not be useful to win the heart of your future wife? Hell, even if you don't plan on remarrying. Gift like that can just be useful in diplomacy. Hey, here's some gift. Hey, fellow king, here's some lovely dresses for your wife. Janice pretended to ponder, as he was keen to appear hard to satisfy, but, in truth, he was already captivated. Deep down, he had even decided that he would not leave the boat without this wardrobe. What is your price? He was told that the object was very expensive, which did not bother the king in any way as he was living in opulence. He thus hurried to spend the large sum of money necessary to acquire it, to the euphoria of the merchant who was delighted to make such a good deal. The wardrobe being quite heavy, it was carried to the castle, and the sovereign insisted that it would be placed directly in his bedroom, where he could admire it. Janice was satisfied by his purchase, uh, and did not fail to touch the wooden decorations. If God so wishes, perhaps will I be able to give you to a lovely maiden soon. If only he knew how right he was. He didn't just buy a wardrobe and some dresses, he also bought himself a princess. Indeed, a few hours later, Kiana awakened inside her wardrobe. It was not as dark as inside the golden bowl, therefore she managed to stay calm. She methodically went over her options. Good, it would seem that I am still alive. That is a good start. I now need to ascertain where I am. Let us cross fingers that Nahima's plan worked, and that I will not come face to face with my father. The young woman anxiously made the secret partition slide and half opened the furniture's door in order to better distinguish her surroundings. She found herself in a completely foreign room, probably the bedroom of a wealthy person since the place was spacious and decorated with a lot of taste. I like this tune. Gotta get the doll for the accessory. Exactly, Vanna! It's nice music, even if it prevents me from actually monetizing these videos. That reminds me, I forgot to, uh... Making me miss the Renaissance Fair.
I forgot to uh, update to add this to the Chronotopia playlist. With a hand on her heart, she sighed in relief. It would seem that everything worked as expected. Carefully, she made sure that she was alone before she came out of her hiding place and stretched her legs. She took that opportunity to analyze her new environment. I was likely bought by a noble, but I must not drop my guard just yet. I know nothing about my owner. Is it a man? Is it a woman? And, most importantly, is it someone I can trust? Considering my recent misfortunes, I cannot take the risk of falling into the arms of a violent lord or a liar. The princess bobbed her heart, her head with wisdom. Here is what I am going to do. I will only reveal my existence once I am sure that the one who bought me is a charitable soul. In the meantime, I will continue to glean information and, at the slightest hint of a threat, I will flee from this house to seek fortune somewhere else. You miss a little fair. As she was hungry, Kiana sneaked into the corridors in search of food and lost no time in finding the kitchens left unattended. Thrilled by the opportunity, she stole a chunk of bread as well as some fruits because she could easily eat those on her way. Once her misdeed was done, she returned to the room. Then she slipped into her hideout, but not without dressing beforehand. As she was hearing all the noises around her, she quickly understood that she had reached the palace of a prince and that he was the one who had purchased the furniture. Janice and his retainers hardly suspected her presence, so they were completely uh, oblivious at first. The sovereign would go hunting early in the morning and would only come back at noon in order to eat a light meal. He would then attend to his business and only return to his bedroom after supper. In his absence, the young Moor had plenty of time to explore the area and steal the pittance of the day. Since she was quickly becoming bored, she began to make the bed, put ornaments away, and open the window to get some fresh air. The servant who came to change the sheets and sweep the floor every afternoon would never stay very long, but she still noticed that furniture items had moved. Gradually, the domestic staff started whispering that a ghost had elected domicile in the king's quarters, and that objects would frequently trade places. The food was, uh, disappearance was attributed to that same ghost, which was believed to have starved to death in its previous life. <laughs> Janice himself was forced to pay attention to this little game, which fortuitously co coincided with the port purchase of the wardrobe. Since he did not believe in fairies, he suspected a thief or a rascal was playing a trick on him. I will catch this scoundrel red-handed, and I will show him. Thus, a few days later, he concealed himself after claiming that he was going to go hunting, so that he could be sure once and for all. Kiana did not waste any time and quite innocently stepped out of her wardrobe. She began to do a bit of cleaning as usual. The king stood there open-mouthed, and it took him a while to be able to fully understand what was going on in front of him. He nonetheless managed to come to his senses... <laughs> Just that expression! I love his expression here. Uh, he nonetheless managed to come to his senses and leapt out of his hideout. What are you doing in my room, young lady? And the wardrobe achievement. The air shivered as she did not expect to be confronted with her owner so soon. She had only seen him through the wardrobe's opening, so she was disconcerted to formally meet him for the first time. New file, new file! 
to Baldo and Doralis. And a cool photo of donkey skin. Or drawing for donkey skin. Giovanni Francesco Straparola recounts in the first volume of the Facetious Knights, 1550, the story of Tibaldo, Thibault in French. Uh, Prince of Salerno, who wants to marry his daughter Doralise. The particularity of this tale is that it is a primitive version of donkey skin, even though the donkey is completely omitted. Yet everything is here. As in donkey skin, the dying queen makes her spouse promise he will only marry in a second wedding a woman who corresponds to an arbitrary beauty criterion, here being able to wear her ring. And her daughter inadvertently manages to fulfill that criterion, which encourages the husband, all they convinced, to break the taboo of incest. Restraparola's tale greatly deviates from Perrault's version, is that Doralis immediately hides herself in her wardrobe with the complicity of her nurse to escape that grim fate. Without verifying its content, Tibaldo sells it to a Genevan merchant, who carries it away on his ship traveling to England. The wardrobe is then sold to the king of that country, a man named Janice. While Janice goes hunting, Doralis discreetly cleans his room, which he cannot help but notice. Thus, he remains hidden to catch the culprit red-handed, but ends up falling in love with Doralis as soon as he sees her. That is, uh, one, part one, so I assume that there's going to be horrors. I assume that there's going to be worse shit, that there's going to be even more bad shit. Why does every doctor's office still play Nora Jones and Natalie Merchant? Uh, I couldn't tell you, I haven't been to a doctor's office in forever. One second. Yeah, I don't go to doctor's offices, so I don't know what music plays there. Janice had a tan skin and the stature of a great lord. Under a mane of ebony hair, two dark and grave eyes were gleaming. He looked imposing and much older than she was, probably in his early thirties. She still found him handsome. Apologies, my lord. My name is Kiana. I am the daughter of a French king, and I came to seek refuge in your lovely country. La, beautiful creature. What happened to you? The princess was reluctant to answer. Because she had revealed her story to her previous suitors, she chose to do the opposite. That way, she hoped to ward off the bad luck that was hanging over her. I cannot speak about my past. Let me know who your father is at the very least. I have been trapped in this wardrobe for far too long. As a result, I have forgotten his name. Although the stranger refused to reveal why she was hiding in a furniture item, the monarch disregarded this, this small detail for her, uh, for he had something in mind. Rest assured, you are now under my protection. Ah, what am I thinking? I have yet to introduce myself. I am called King Janice. Come with me, I will show you around my property. As courteously as possible, he led her into the hallways and showed her the main uh, to the main rooms, or showed to her the main rooms of the castle. While they were talking, she managed to learn more about him. Will I have the pleasure of meeting the queen? Alas, I am recently widowed. My late wife died. My late wife died as a result of a fall from her horse. What a tragic accident! Yes, it was devastating to me. We were riding in the mountains when her mount had an uncontrollable fit and galloped off. Unfortunately, it ventured to a dangerous area, and the ground gave way under its hoofs. 
The dive proved to be fatal, and the animal swept my beloved along. Cruel irony, she left without giving me a child. You will only find myself here. My condolences. You are very kind. You see, even though her passing saddens me, I still think of marrying again as soon as possible. I am not an old fogey just yet, and I want to have offspring. That is understandable. I could ask the same question. A beautiful young lady such as yourself should be married. I am painfully aware of that fact, my lord. With great regret, my father has always refused to give my hand in marriage to anybody. So you are still a virgin? Kiana promptly lowered her eyes. She would have wished to answer yes because she had gone back in time well before her relationship with Thalia, but she could not erase that experience with a wave of her hand either. Confused, she did little more than silently smiling, and Janice interpreted that as a sign of modesty. Get some, uh, oh, we need to get me some blood work done? Probably. Probably do. He wants to lay pipe? Indeed. Everybody wants to, everybody wants to have sex with this teenage girl. I think she's like 17 or something like that. Everyone wants to have sex with this uh, jailbait here. Because I think she's like 16, 17, maybe 18. She might be 18. Hell, she might even be 19. I don't even remember. I don't even remember her uh, what age she is, actually. Yeah, I'm actually not sure how old she is exactly. Like, I assumed. I assumed, like, 17, but I don't know if it's ever... I don't think it's actually... I don't think it's actually stated how old she is, come to think of it. But I would guess probably 17 or 18 is what I would assume her age is. 17 or 18. Uh, anyway, his stern look immediately melted away, and he jovi jovially took her hand. You should have said so, dear. Would you not want to become my wife? That way, our two hearts would not be lonely anymore. The king looked at her one more time before closing his eyes with confidence. Kiana seemed an excellent choice. Young, good-looking, still a virgin, and a dad with all virtues. She expressed herself with ease, which gave away her privileged upbringing, and she acted very gracefully. To top it all, she was desirable, which he quite liked. My lord, is it true? Please do not play a joke on me. I am absolutely sincere. I, I do not know what to say. Say yes, and we will both be, and we both will be fulfilled. The princess had overcome so many hardships for the sole purpose of becoming queen that she hardly dared to believe her dream was handed to her on a plate. She had such a strong emotional response that tears furiously escaped her eyes. Jeunesse may not have been an attractive young man like Griselda or Thalia anymore, but at that moment, he seemed to be the man she needed. 
I gladly accept. The Sovereign exulted. Heart of my heart, my soul, my hope! Ah, we must celebrate our wedding as soon as possible. Without further delay, he led her to the dining area, where a retainer was quietly setting the table. The king beckoned her to come closer, which she did. Lady Kiana, this is Louise. From this day forward, she will be your companion. She will take care of you and will bend over backwards to satisfy your every need. How old is he? Uh, he is early 30s. So, by modern standards, and frankly, by non-noble standards at the time, um, uh, the age gap is definitely weird. You know, she is late teens. Like, she can't be any older than 20, and probably not even 20. I don't think she's even 20. So she is probably like 17 to 19 years old. Um, so she's late teens, he's early 30s. That is a weird and creepy age gap, by modern standards. But, by the standards of nobility of the past? Oh, that's nothing. Yep. Yeah, like six, 700 years ago? You know, six, 600 years ago? No one would bat an eye at a 12-year-old being betrothed to a 40-year-old. Because at that point, because like, that's politics. Like, it's not a marriage of love. It's, it's just a political alliance. It's fine, I watch Game of Thrones, we good. So, the incest, in that case, the incest it probably isn't a, a big a, a big issue to you either then, Jordan. The servant politely bowed down before her. A pleased to do a meet to you, madam. I would like to celebrate our wedding as soon as possible. I will thus summon my counselors at once, so that we can prepare the ceremony. Louise, show the guest room to Lady Kiana. She will settle there in the meantime. Certainly, my lord. Overexcited, Janice kissed his brother betrothed's hand and walked away through the nearest door. This way, please. The woman called Louise did not seem very accommodating. She was not trying to start a conversation at all, and would answer any questions in the, uh, question in the vaguest and most concise of language. Kiana had to acknowledge that, could, that she could not get anything out of her. That can't be her voice. I'm sorry. Thus she let herself be guided through the corridors, deep in thought. It was not uncommon for a girl from a good family to marry a man ten years her senior. She was therefore not shocked. On the other hand, she could not say that this entirely new situation was not filling her with apprehension, particularly when her future husband seemed so impatient. A few hours later, the princess sneaked into the palace's gardens under the cover of the night. She was so consumed with anxiety and uncertainty that her heart was pounding, so she thought she ought to confide in someone to ease her mind. And who else could she turn to but her godmother? She whispered to summon her, and the fairy materialized under her eyes in her usual swirl of colors. What can I do for you, child? I am well aware that you do not like being disturbed, Godmother, but I really need to talk to someone. I cannot sleep. I am preoccupied. Hey, Green Five! Don't get to see you very often. The creature chuckled softly with fire on fire eyes on her. 
No harm done, as long as you do not insult me. Kiana immediately lost her composure, as red as a beetroot. Joking aside, I am more than willing to help. Speak, what are you so concerned about? Well, this is quite an embarrassing matter. Since you are a girl yourself, I was thinking that you might understand... that you might understand. Although I suppose you do not have this kind of problem as a fairy. Do not beat around the bush, love. I am mature enough to talk about sex, if that is what you are trying to imply. I was wondering, am I still a virgin? Well, well, now that is an interesting question. Usually you would know the answer to that, but... The issue is that Lord Janice absolutely wants to wed virgins. He was quite clear about it. Considering that he proposed to me, I do not want to deceive him. But I have had a relationship with a man in the previous timeline. Was that erased by my time travels? I do not know what to think anymore. The wedding occurs in a few days, and I am in anguish at the thought that he will find out whether or not I have lied during the wedding night. He will surely see the difference, will he not? Nah, eh, just spend the first night laying back and thinking of England. The fairy placed an accommodating hand on her shoulder and stared at her with a mix of compassion and pity. Since you want me to be frank, I shall be. I have both good and bad news for you. Start with the bad one, then. No, you are not a virgin anymore. What is the good news? The good one is that it does not matter in the slightest. What do you mean? To clarify my statement, we will need to revisit the meaning of the word itself. Virginity refers to two concepts. On the one hand, the state before deflowering. On the other hand, the state of discovering something for the very first time. If we start from the idea of deflowering, then no, you have not lost your maidenhood since the reality where you did no longer exists. Hymens are a lie. They are a lie. What a relief. Wait, you said I was not a virgin anymore. The truth, princess, is that deflowering itself is a myth. There are scarcely any differences between the body of a virgin and the body of a sexually active woman. What about the loss of my hymen? My dear child, the hymen has never been a member and synonymous with chastity, as they would have you believe. It is merely a skinfold of your genitals among others. You see, since the dawn of time, men have been obsessed with the idea of controlling women's sexuality in order to continue their lineage. A pathologic fear of infidelity pushed them to transform a mere anatomical detail into exact science. Preach it, sister! Hell, how many women lose their hymens before they even have sex? Like, there's loads of women who have lost their hymens well before they have actually had sex. Just went into a rant about this the other day. Your mom said otherwise. Did you know, for instance, that some women are born without hymen? How can you ascertain with exactness whether or not they are still virgins. I... No, do not answer. It was a rhetorical question. The only way to be sure is to ask them. Yet I am sure that a doctor could examine me with his equipment. Yeah. Oh, he'd examine with his equipment, all right. <clears throat> I lost mine to a horse, riding one. A physician has no way of knowing if you would have, have had intercourse. Those who claim otherwise are frauds. 
The father of modern surgery himself maintains that the hymen is not a thing that is constant or natural. In other words, it is impossible to demonstrate its existence. And yet the rumor spreads so much that it is considered to be science in the eyes of some. Hey, troll police. My husband is unable to tell the difference then? It would be a great relief. Although I suppose I have no reason to worry if the hymen is not an irrefutable proof of chastity. This is where the real bad news lies. Because your body betrays nothing, men will seek hints of the slightest deviation in your behavior. The hymen is not a physical thing, but it is undeniably a social phenomenon. This is the only part of this game I'll remember. I see. But if I remain prudish and reserved, there will be no doubt about me, will there? Yeah. Unfortunately, I cannot guarantee anything. It depends solely on your husband to trust you. If he suffers from a paranoid tendency, you can be certain that the slightest irregular breath during intercourse will become suspect. Conversely, if he is accommodating, you will be able to act as you see fit. Incidentally, this is all the trouble I wish on you. I did not imagine virginity to be such a complicated matter. And yet, we have only alluded to one of, the, one of the two definitions I gave you. Do you remember what the other one was? I think it was about a state of discovery. Exactly. Your body makes no distinction, but there is some innocence in experiencing something for the very first time. Once the unknown has been domesticated, it loses part of its magic. And this is exactly what is happening to you, princess. It is true that in the course of my travels I have become more and more disillusioned. I have lost my past innocence. Won't she time travel back to her hymen get restored? Presumably. That is assuming she still had it at, at that point anyway. There is nothing sad about it. Each learning pro process gradually makes way to experience and self-confidence. A young painter can go into raptures about the apparent witchcraft exerted by his masters, but one day he will know how to use those same techniques in his creations. His art can only become better, and he will, in turn, be able to train apprentices. Are Hyman's real? I mean, yes, in that, you know, it, uh, there is like a real piece of skin. <laughs> the Matrix made them. She didn't even know she lost because of social construct. I still have the feeling that a part of myself died away. What has happened to the gullible Kiana, whom Flo rebuffed because she did not know how to sweep a house? You are not the same girl I met, that much is true. That Kiana may no longer exist, but another one has taken her place. A more mature Kiana, who will perhaps know what she wants a little better. Your body may still be a blank slate, but your mind is not. It is made of scars, wounds inherited from your different experiences. So I am a casualty of life. Lovely. Thank you for cheering me up, Medea. You can lament, find it regrettable, but it is not my point of view. Never forget that this is what makes you human. No individual can be absolutely perfect and immaculate. If that were the case, life would be quite bland. Even if you disavow her, I quite like the Kiana who is standing before me. The princess almost choked in astonishment. For her godmother to compliment her was not an everyday event. Taking advantage of her alarm, the fairy pressed an accusatory finger on the tip of her nose and snorted with amusement. 
Go to bed, love. You need sleep for the big day. And if you really feel that your husband wants blood, there's always the good old chicken liver technique. Do call me beforehand. I will help you avoid infection. <laughs> you? You? Oh no, I had not even thought about it. I did not bleed with Lord Thalier, but he never pointed it out to me. If the monarch happens to believe it, he is going to want to check the sheets. A little bird tells me that this is going to be the least of his worries. Be a dear now and go back to sleep. Yes, godmother. With these teasing words, she vanished into the darkness. What was that? What was that joke on Curb Your Enthusiasm the, with the punchline of P.S. Your pussy's in the sink? Cause that's all that because the uh, shove a chicken lever in there and go to bed and anyway, with these teasing words she vanished into the darkness judging that her advice was quite good kiana complied and the night chased her last worries away only a handful of days passed between the arrival of the heiress in genoa and the wedding ceremony she barely had time to familiarize herself with this unknown castle. In contrast, King Janice acted in a positively charming way toward her. The nuptials were celebrated with great fanfare, and he led her to the conjugal bed with panache. His conquering smile faded away at the very moment their marriage had to be consummated. The princess was not so greedy, since Lord Thalia before him had accustomed her to the bare minimum. Yet, that night, the king struggled and exhausted himself so much that, the very next day, he ordered a blanquette and nutritious biscuits to physically recover. In fact, it did not even once cross his mind to check the virginity of his wife, which was not a bad thing for our heroine. Kiana did not hold it against him, as she was used to the unfulfillment of her needs. If truth be told, she dismissed the incident from her mind altogether. The following weeks unfolded like in a dream. Kiana was so busy attending balls and comedies given in her honor, she was enjoying appearing in her most beautiful clothes so much that she could not think about anything else. Janice seemed madly in love with her. He was showering her with luxurious gifts and indulgences. Court ladies respected her. Everyone would bow down in her wake. In brief, she was finally enjoying the recognition due to her standing. At the slightest displeasure, she only had to call her companion, and she would comply with her orders in every way. Do not force your talent. Bluebeard. Uh, Do not force your talent is actually a reference to La Fontaine that serves as the alternative title to one of the novels in Boccaccio's Decameron. The Decameron is a huge source of inspiration for many of the storytellers mentioned up until now. The Decameron was uh, 1349 to 1353. Contrary to Griselda, this is not a fairy tale, but a salacious tale. The old judge, Ricciardo de Ch uh, Chinzica, convinces himself to only marry a woman who would be both young and beautiful. He has his heart set on Bartolomea, but regrets overestimating his strength as soon as their wedding night happens. He is indeed unable to satisfy her, comes up with all sorts of pretexts for not touching her, to the lady's greatest disappointing, disappointment. However, the relationship changes dramatically following a fishing trip. 
The couple's small boat drifts too far from the shore, and the lovely Bartolomea catches the eye of the attractive corsair, Paganino, who promptly abducts her. He takes such great care of her that she forgets the judge and enjoys a peaceful life in his company. In despair, Ricciardo scours cities looking for her, and eventually hears that she is in Monaco, and hurries there as well. But once he arrives, surprise, Bartolomea claims she does not know him. After pressuring her, she admits that she quite simply refuses to return to Pisa with him, as she does not care in the slightest about as he does not care in the slightest about her needs. She is even willing to scrap her honor, considering that neither him or her parents truly respect her. Humiliated, the judge scampers away before dying of grief. She then officially ties the knot with Paganino. Well, dang. Everything had happened so fast. Yet the wo young woman did not forget her promise. Once she was accustomed to her new life, she set down all of her adventures on paper and wanted to deliver this letter to Nahima with her best regards. Louise, would you be so kind as to find a messenger to take this missive to France? Certainly, madam. The retainer quietly bowed and walked away. Kiana was eagerly anticipating her reply. Oh, I wonder how many horseback riding days it takes to travel between Genoa and my father's castle. Nahima will surely tell me. I hope she is not going to take too much time looking for her words. I cannot wait to know her reaction to my wedding. Again, ask the fairy to deliver the letter. Just be like, hey, Medea. I don't want to use a wish for this. Would you, con would you consider doing this as a personal favor? Worst case, fairy says no, and you send the letter by mail. You know, like, that's the worst case scenario. And today is like, nope. And it's like, well, fair enough. While she was whistling a happy tune, she was interrupted by the king's sudden arrival. My lord, what are you doing here? I thought you were in the middle of a discussion with your counselors. Our meeting ended earlier than expected. I am quite pleased to hear that. What would you say of going on a short stroll in my company? You have yet to show me the charms of your city, and I very much look forward to discovering them. <laughs> Sweetheart, I have more urgent matters to discuss with you. With me? Your serious look scares me. What is it about? Is it true that you have just posted a letter? Do not lie to me. I saw Louise give it to a messenger. It can only come from you. The princess blinked, confused. This is correct, but I am not quite certain I understand the issue. Would you have liked me to ask for permission beforehand? Absolutely! It is inadmissible for you to do this sort of thing behind my back. My love, is this supposed to be a joke? If that is the case, it is not a very good one. Have I not proven that I give a great deal of importance to your honor? I am insulted that you would be suspicious of me already. Put yourself in my place. How can I rest assured that you do not keep a lover? So close to our wedding? That would be a record deserving of praise. If you want to know everything, I was sending a letter to my foster sister whom I adore and who stayed in France, making it impossible for us to keep in contact. It seemed appropriate to inform her of our union. Is that really all? Come now, dear. I am willing to give you guarantees, but you also need to trust me a little more. You are right. I do not know what came over me. I love you so much that I am afraid that you are going to leave me and break my heart eventually. Kiana stared at him, astounded. There is no need to worry that much. I am here by your side and I do not intend to leave. Yeah, I mean, she's got, she's a queen. She's got what she wants. 
Like literally, this was her like like this was what she grew up to do. Like it's like this is like she is living her dream. She you know, you're not as young and sexy as she wanted, but I mean still a fucking queen, bitch. I know, I know. But when I look at you similar to a goddess, so pure, so soft, loving and fresh like a lily, I feel unworthy of you. Dude, you're a king. You're a king, she's a princess. Like, you're a king, she's a queen. Boom. Back in the days, like, back in these days, that was, that was literally all you needed. You should not. A heavy silence gradually settled in. The princess nonetheless attempted to dispel the unease. Can we consider this incident over? Yes, my love. It was the first in a long list of issues. As time passed, Kiana realized that her husband completely idealized her and did not accept her imperfections. At mealtimes, he would examine what she was eating and he would take away all the things she liked. My love, you consume too much high fat foods. It is not healthy. I will ask the cook to use less fat next time. You fucker! Fat is where the flavor is, you son of a bitch! Come on, it is the best part! What is the point of removing the element that enhances the taste of meat? Right? Kiana gets it? Divorce his ass. No fat? The no like getting rid of the beef fat? Get divorce this son of a bitch. This man's parents raised him wrong, is all I'm saying. You are right. I will demand that the cook does not add salt to your broth as well. I prefer to make sure that your humors are well balanced. The princess jumped from her seat and thumped the table. Why on earth would I be punished like that? Why do you not follow your own diet? You know how worrisome my excess of bile is. The doctor recommended the same food to me for this very reason. Besides, sit back down, please. This is unbecoming of a queen. Likewise, he had hired a tutor so that she could hone her theology practice and regarded activities that were unnecessary and ungodly with contempt. Ah, catch you playing cards again. Yet you know I disapprove card games. Cruel woman, are you doing this just to hurt me? My dear, I have to stress once again that I have every right to spend time with servants. Now that I am queen, it is my duty to learn more about my people so that I can govern them better. And what could be more innocuous than sharing their distractions? Innocuous? Innocuous! Have you already forgotten that gambling is a mortal sin? Hey, Margaret. Soon you will fall into addiction and sell even your clothes. Naked you will come to beg me and I will only be able to sigh that I have warned you. There is absolutely no gambling involved here. The loser has to pay a rather harmless forfeit. We laugh, then we move on to the next game. In the previous round, I had to sing. What is dangerous about singing, I wonder? Forfeit. Hey, Hugo. How can you be so sure that those rascals are not going to take advantage of you? They could cheat in such a way as to always make you lose. 
then force you to dispense sexual favors. As the king, I cannot let you disgrace yourself. You are inventing stories, dear. First of all, forfeits are never of a humiliating nature. I made sure of it. Then, our servants are perfectly respectable men and women. I can hardly imagine them developing such a trap. And finally, supposing that you would be right, why would they deliberately threaten me when I could evict them from the castle? That would be totally irrational. I did not want to hear anything. This is an impious activity, a distraction reserved for people of lowly birth. As a lady of noble birth, I expect so much better from you. He's got a... I mean, what he's got is, uh... He's controlling. He's got this image of her in his head and he is doing everything he can to force her to live up to that image rather than learning to accept you know, accept her as who she is. Following the same logic, Janice would obstinately refuse to hand her the reins of his kingdom, as it was often the case in other royal families. Masula, I do not understand this caprice of yours. Why would you want to oversee our finances? It is dreadfully boring. In what you perceive as an eccentricity, I see a tribute to my late mother. She was a great queen whose accomplishments were renowned across the region, and I dream of following in her footsteps. Considering that I am now queen as well, it only seems appropriate to take an interest in the way you manage the country's affairs. I would do anything to make you happy, my hope. The fact remains that a lady of noble birth like you should not stoop to executing that kind of task. Leave it to the royal steward. He does a very good job. I see that you do not want to give me any decision-making power. Yet, it is my duty as queen to ensure the well-being of my subjects, thus perpetuating the family tradition. I'm not asking to be in control of everything, since you seem to care a lot about this point but you could let me have a part of the finances all the same. My dear, I only want what is best for you. Believe me, it would be better for you to let me handle it. You do realize that more is expected from the wife of a king than being an ornamental plant? All the queens in the neighboring provinces hold at least a little power. Just because other lords yield to such fancies does not mean that I have to imitate them. He's fatphobic, he is. And those shrews do not measure up to you in any way. Try to focus on something else instead. Really? What then? You do not allow me to have any distraction. The other day you chased after me because I was reading a book. I only took it away from you because it was a novel. It is a dangerous genre that is quick to put nonsense into your head and corrupt even the purest woman. Because you imagine that I am going to read theological publications as dry as crisp bread at any time of the day. I do not have the right to eat what I want to eat. I do not have the right to read what I want to read. I do not have, even have the right to take an interest in my own kingdom anymore. I am sorry that you are taking it that way, love. My intent was not to irritate you. I am only concerned about your well-being. Nobody is more sensitive about my well-being than I than myself. I am still the most affected, as far as I know. Of course, of course, my sweet. I admit I can get carried away sometimes. But everything I do, I genuinely do with your salvation in mind. I do not want you to live in sin and be locked out of heaven's gate in the afterlife. 
It seems to me that you do not behave any differently. Admittedly, but do not forget that women condemned mankind to an earthly exile due to their original sin. You are starting out with a slight disadvantage that I simply attempt to correct. Kiana shrugged as a sign of capitulation. Her husband had a talent for using the most flippant pretext that be, when he was not using his religion as a rather convenient weapon. She was a believer, as everybody was at the time, yet it was the first time she was introduced to someone as zealous as the king. And even then, he was only zealous when it was convenient for him. The princess could be denied everything in the name of God, while Janice was living quite comfortably. No meal was fat or salty enough to his taste. It quickly appeared that, behind his feigned admiration, lied an obsession with control. Naturally, by dint of being watched all the time and judged on her every move, the young Moor shortly started to feel stifled in her gilded prison. All the more so because it was not a figure of speech. She was quite simply forbidden to step outside the castle. I beg you, at least allow me to stretch my legs when the fancy strikes me. There is nothing prohibiting you to do so. The garden, was, the garden was created for this purpose. A square of greenery is admittedly nice to have, but I am asking for more, and you are perfectly aware of that. Allow me to stroll in Genoa. On your own? That is out of the question. You could be mistreated by some passerby, or worse, attacked and robbed by bandits. I care too much about you to risk letting an accident happen. In that case, lend me an escort. I am simply asking to go for a walk beyond the walls of the castle. I am afraid I cannot. My men are currently very busy. But maybe next time. Bullshit! Kiana let a swear, slip, swear word slip and slammed the door in his face. You go, girl. She had shown herself to be relatively patient until then, but her husband was playing on her nerves, and she was starting to be unable to suppress her growing irritation. Disgruntled, she went to find her retainer in the hope of convincing her. Louise, I need you. Anything you want, madam. I would like to walk around the city for a few hours. I unfortunately cannot grant your request. His grace has been quite clear. He forbids you to leave the castle in any way possible. The princess bit her lips out of frustration. Her blood was boiling in her veins. She had to find a way to persuade the retainer. Appeal to Benevolence I know it is important for you to respect the orders given by the king, but I am asking for nothing more than a very small favor. I am becoming so bored here. Would you not turn a blind eye to my absence just once? I promise to be back on time and do nothing that morality could disapprove of. I have no doubt that you are sincere, madam. But if I accept, we both know that you will come to make the exact same request, and I will not be able to refuse any more. Furthermore, you are expecting me to break no less than an oath of allegiance. I take great pride in my loyalty thus. You will thus you will understand why I cannot renounce it so easily. Please abandon this futile endeavor. Very well. Seeing as I am denied the slightest pleasure, I will go back and read those books the Sovereign hates so much. Kiana sprinted towards the library in a nasty mood. A sudden intuition urged her to turn around, and she saw Louise walk away in the opposite direction. 
Intrigued, she decided to discreetly follow her. As the servant was passing under the arches at a brisk pace, the young woman rushed into the bushes located underneath, guided by the blaring sound of her clocks. Then the sound abruptly stopped. Prompted by her curiosity, Kiana cast a glance above and caught her companion conversing with the king. She listened carefully to what they were saying. As agreed, I have reported the exact words of the queen. This concludes my report for this morning. Thank you, Louise. You said that she is currently staying at the library? Absolutely. I intend to go there myself once I will be done with my kitchen tasks so that I can keep watching her. Perfect, perfect. You can go now. Once she was certain they had both walked away, the princess cursed again. Oh, that little devil. She was not only hired to serve me, but to keep an eye on me as well. So that is how Janice is aware of my every move, and how he could so quickly learn that I intended to send a message to Nahima. What tells me that he has not given the same order to the other valets in the house? I can only rely on myself again. Kiana let herself fall in the dense groves with a loud sigh. Just my luck. To think I was so happy to become queen. Now here I am, in an even more suffocating situation than Claremont's. Yet all hope is not lost. I may be able to make some kind of hiding place in the garden, so that I can be in peace at least during summer days. My husband will not be able to cackle in my ears even if he will certainly confiscate all the pleasant books that remain on his shelves. Stay strong. Let us look for a suitable place. It is sad. The young woman worked on rummaging through the trees and bushes in order to find a small space she could arrange at her convenience. She searched and searched for a long time, not afraid to get her dress dirty. As she believed her effort to be vain, she suddenly noticed a crack in one of the walls surrounding the castle. What a surprise to her when, upon moving the plants covering this part aside, she discovered a hole big enough to fit a person. Could it be that my luck is turning? With caution, she crept into the narrow passage and felt her way along. She had to bend down and lift her petticoat many times over, but, after some contortions, she finally reached the outside. The sun dazzled her for a brief moment before revealing her surroundings. She found herself inside the city, in the corner of a deserted street, at the other end of the doors which allowed people to enter Lord Janice's palace. From her spot, she could enjoy a breathtaking sea view, the same one she had from her bedroom. Nevertheless, the sense of freedom made the landscape a lot more enchanting. Her heart pounding with excitement, Kiana did not think anymore and threw herself into the exploration of the Citadel. And that's where we'll stop for tonight. You want the petticoat? Fancy clothes are fancy. Um, so yeah, two hours, so we will stop for here for tonight. When I wear it, it's a petticoat. Nothing beats pettiness.
So I will be back whenever. So thanks for coming, and I'll see you next time. Good night, everybody.